Hi, welcome to this module for how to install and use Core University Edition. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Core onto your Windows machine and walk you through the various interfaces. The first thing you want to do is sign into the Johns Hopkins University Sakai website. I have that link already opened right here. You want to click the link at the top for your final project, which is EN645800 up here at the top. And once you're there you want to hover over this tools bar right here and then click on Core. And what that'll do is take you to this screen right here. Now this screen shows you various things. Right here the first thing you'll notice is a link to the Vitech website. And this one shows you the installation instructions. I'm going to actually walk you through this in the video. Uh, activation key, you'll need to click on this later as well. You'll need to remember the instructor. You'll remember, need to remember the password as well. First thing I'm going to do is click on the Vitech website. I'm actually going to control click here because I don't want to close out of this and that opens up a new tab in Firefox. So you'll notice at the, Vi the Vitech website, here's the home page right here. At the very top of the home page is downloads. So you want to click on downloads. Now about halfway down the downloads page, you're going to see a link for Core 7 University Edition with Server pa Service Pack 8. Now whichever semester you happen to be listening to this video on, this might be Core 8, Core 9, Core 10, whichever it happens to be, but it's the University Edition is what you want to pay attention to. Go ahead and just click on that and uh, download it to your desktop, the standard way you download any kind of software off the internet. Uh, same way for installing it, you just double click on the icon. I already have it on my computer so it's not going to do exactly the same. Plus, it's kind of a waste of time to just walk you through how to install a program on Windows. So go ahead and click on that link, let it install on your desktop, double click the link on your desktop and then it'll start to install. And one of the things you're going to run into when you first open Core is you're going to run to a splash screen like this. It says, uh, welcome to Core, you're going to put your username on there, you're going to put whatever your name is, uh, and then it's going to ask you for a password. So how you get the password is, I just left that website there. So as you have to go back to this, this link that was provided, and you remember the Sakai homepage right here, you clicked on Tools, and then you clicked on Core, and it took you here click out of that because it's the same page. Now we have to go to this activation key right here. In order to get this password right here, you're going to have to click on this activation key. I'm going to go ahead and control click this activation key and bring open another tab right here. And this will take you to the Activate the University Edition of Core website. Now you go ahead and enter your information here. Everything's self-explanatory. All the way down to Instructor. And remember for this page, here's your instructor, you're going to enter that in there, it's a drop down on there. You have to go down to the it's where it is, and then you're going to enter your password right here. Here's the password, and there's the password you're going to want to enter. So once you do that, make sure you get the email you put in here is, is valid, not just some BS one that you have all your junk mail sent to, but an actual valid email address, because you're going to go there, and they're going to send you the validation password or the activation key to sign into core. So once you have that you're going to cut and paste it into that and you're going to hit uh, enter and then you're going to end up with something that looks a lot like this. So once core is open you're going to see a welcome screen with a pane on the left side. Now this pane is called the project pane. It's over here. This shows you the different database core is going to use to track your project. Um, the items in each of these databases can be linked to each other through these things called relationships that you establish uh, as you go through and you start to develop your system architecture. So here's the home page. That's the first thing that pops up and it's highlighted up here in the upper left hand corner is the home page. This is what it shows. The tips on t startup is pretty useful sometimes too. You can just click through them. There's probably like 20 in there. You can just click through all of them and read them if you want to. You've got the home page at the top. Now here's the database. Now what the database shows you are the different elements in core that can have these things called relationships with each other. And that's down. That's shown down here what kinds of relationships you can have with other things. And I'll get into that more as we uh, get on with uh, developing our system architecture. So. Here's the database, all the different database elements are listed right here.
and then you've got the schema view. Now the schema view is more useful for people with the full edition of Core because you can't alter any of the schemas in the University Edition of Core. But basically you can create, in the full edition, you can create your own elements in there. And uh, all the different inputs and outputs and the different relationships you can have with each one of those elements is customizable in the full version of Core. Uh, down here you've got utilities. This allows you to organize and sort the database items according to whatever you need. So before we get into the rest of the items in Core, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to save your project. This is pretty important, so uh, you need to do this often. Um, the thing about Core is it's quirky, and there's really there's no undo feature. There's no Control Z. So if you mess up a relationship or you delete something that you shouldn't have deleted, it's pretty much gone forever, and you have to restore your last save file. Um, so it's a really good idea to save often. Now how you do that, I'm going to show you the long way. It's not done in the typical Windows-based program fashion. Uh, typical Windows programs like uh, PowerPoint or Word, you click on File and then there's a Save As. So if you click on, there's no Save As on here. There's Save Diagram As, but we'll get into that later. But There's no Save As. So for Core, what you have to do is click on Export right here. And I already have a folder created, so create a folder wherever you want in your Windows. And I'll just save mine as test right here. And it saves it as a .a70 file. That's uh, whatever version of Core you're using is that number right there. So if it's version 8, it'll say A80, for instance. So you'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to replace that with that. So once your file's saved, you're pretty much ready to move on and continue your project. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the different parts of the Core interface. So along the top, these are conventional menus that you'll become familiar with throughout your project. Okay. Uh, one of the things I should mention about Core is there's more than one way to view the same exact thing, and there's more than one way to execute the same function in Core. Um, so one of the things that I need to probably bring out right now is you can view different things in Core using these shortcuts along the top, or there's going to be shortcuts along the side, and I'll show you those later. Oh, and there's also shortcuts along the bottom right here, and I'll show you how to, how to use those as well. Um, so the boxes along the top are shortcuts that become active when the database item can use them. So uh, these are grayed out right now because this database item requirement, there's no requirements in here right now, so of course these are grayed out. These have to do with actual individual requirements or functions or whatever the database element happens to be selected. So the first button, let me talk about the first one right here. This is export button. That's pretty much the shortcut way of doing file export. Okay, That's what I just showed you how to do is to save your file. You just click on that once instead of going through the long way and you can do it that way too. Okay. Next one is the print shortcut. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? If you want to see something printed out, then you just hit that. Uh, this one right here is the script shortcut. You know, now you use this when you generate your requirements analysis report, or your functional analysis report, or your A spec report for your deliverables throughout your project. Next button over, this is the element extractor shortcut. This is used to import an external Word document into Core. Um, the document that you import into Core has to be either a doc format file, has to be a rich text file, or it has to be an HTML or plain text format in order for the feature to actually work. Uh, I'll get more into that a little bit later. So this field right here, it, it displays and hides different elements along the project pane. So if you click on Document Management, it took a couple of those out. If you click on Program Management, it takes even more out. Systems Engineering, that's the default. These are the things you typically use when you conduct systems engineering. And then there's Verification, which you know, it customizes what you see in the actual database. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on systems engineering. I never actually changed that throughout my project. So these next four shortcuts right here, uh, these are pretty useful in, in, in showing and hiding different parts of the core interface in order to fit, basically fit more things onto your screen.